Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick 10 minute tutorial. I'm going to show you guys something that's really cool. I'm going to show you what happens when you have a Python program that you've created, but the user doesn't have Python. How does that work, right? So we're going to go ahead and dive into that. So before we do, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that sub button guys, join the discord, join the Patreon. We're freaking going to the moon. We actually have almost 5k subs now and we've, um, We've been doing live streams every week in the Discord. Um, I'm going to keep doing them in the Discord. So if you guys want to join those, hop in there. Let's get into it. So we're going to actually, for this one, I'm going to show you guys, we're going to use, for those of you that watch all my videos, we're going to use the network scanner, scanner that we created um, a few weeks back. So we're going to run it first just to show you guys. Um, you can see if I run it. I, I know you can't see this, but go ahead and run it. And you can see it'll run a scan on my network, right? And then it has other options, but I haven't built them all out yet. So we're gonna go ahead and run it. You can see all these. I normally would hide my MAC address, but I'm not super worried about it because all my devices are changing. So I'm super excited about that too. Um, but anyway, so you can see that it ran, it did a network scan and it told me all the IPs and all the uh, MAC addresses, right? So that's all it does. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We built it out. The whole point of that is now we have it over here in our file, okay? But let's say for whatever reason, the person doesn't have Python, right? We don't know that for sure. Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, we need to hide this data because what happens when this gets picked up, right? What if I scan your network, I log in, scan your network, and someone uploads this to virus total or something like that, right? Now it, I'm busted. I can't use this anymore. So we need to go ahead and obfuscate the data. So for that, we're gonna use Pi Armor. If you've never heard of it, it's simple. It's a tool that actually allows us to obfuscate. And I believe we have to use Pi Armor 7 because it's an older version, but obfuscate, and then we'll just say network scanner, right? All right, and it went ahead and did it all for us real fast. Now you can see here, you remember if you open this with, we'll open it with Vim, doesn't really matter. You can see it gives us, it's pretty easy to read, right? It's just human readable text, no problem, right? But if we open this one, the one it just created for us, look at this, it completely obfuscated it, completely changed it. So now this will run and I don't have to do anything and your antivirus is less likely to pick it up. So this is a really good way to hide your personal scripts um, and make sure that they're a lot harder to reverse engineer, they're harder to get picked up, I will tell you, um, it, even if you do this with most like well-known attacks, um, they probably won't work. And the reason I'm saying that is because you think you're the first person to try and hide a very you know well-known attack? Probably not. So it's probably been uploaded as a obfuscated already. So just keep that in mind that this is geared toward people that want to create their own tools and then hide them so that way people don't turn them in. Um, this is not for unethical reasons. I know a lot of people might say, well, this sounds like it's only can be used illegally. That's completely false. I can tell you on a lot of pen tests, I've written my own tools. I do not want those um, people turning those tools into virus total or anything like that, because if they do, now my tools no longer work and I can't tell you if you're vulnerable or not, because I'm not the only one writing my own tools, right? There's a ton of attackers writing their own tools. So this is actually something that you should be doing. You should be writing your own tools and you should be checking to make sure that it, they either do or do not get caught by um, antivirus. Okay, so we'll go ahead and clear this out. That was pretty easy. We went ahead and obfuscated it. Now what we're going to do, we're going to delete this just because it's going to the same, we're going to be doing something similar and it's going to use the same um, directory. So now what happens if the user doesn't have Python installed, right? Or we don't know they have Python or, you know, what if we're trying to send this to a user that actually may have Python installed, but they don't really know what Python is. So, and we know they're not tech savvy, so we don't want to alert them. We don't want them to be like, oh, what's going on, right? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use PI installer. And both, both of these can be installed pretty easily through pip. So just so, so you know, and we're just going to say, now this is for specifically for an elf file. If you don't know what an elf file is, it's an executable on Linux. So keep that in mind that that this is specifically for that. You can do it with a windows executable, 
but you have to run this on Windows, okay? You can't make a Windows executable on the Linux machine. It, it's The compatibility doesn't work. So just install Pi Installer on Windows, super simple, and then you can make a Windows executable. So we go ahead and say Network Scanner. Now this one might take a little bit and you can see it's gonna go ahead and start creating this. And what it's doing is it's actually taking all of these Python, this Python package and it's creating an executable or a um, Linux elf file. Now I will tell you this script itself won't work on this Linux machine and that's only because I didn't import or I didn't um, install all the dependencies on this machine because this the tool was created for the Windows or for Windows, so I didn't really want to do that. But I will show you that it will do, give you the same thing, which means it does run. Um, and like I said, the only reason I did that was simple. I didn't want to waste the time installing the dependencies for a tool that I actually created for Windows. Um, so I just use this tool as an example because it, it was an easy tool that we did on the channel that everybody got to kind of see us create because I walked through the tool so you know how it works. Um, but you can see this is going to take a while. This is what it's going to do is it's actually taking all of this and creating a package. Um, it, if you don't know, a lot of tools when or a lot of um, executables will have dependencies or um, you know some have DLLs and, and all kinds of things. And it will create a package. So you can see it created it. It says building executable. Now when we go in here, we have this build, right? So we'd send this to the person. We have the distribution and here it is, network scanner. And you notice it's an executable. Now when we hit enter, or hit enter, when we open it, you'll see, we'll go ahead and say, what do we, see, was it distribution? Yeah, so you can see we can actually run this and we'll get the same error and you'll see it's the same, um, no module named IP info because I haven't installed that. So now when we clear it, and we go back one and we run the initial network scanner, which is Python three network scanner.py. This is the original one, no module named IP info. So it's running just the exact same. It's actually working the exact same as a regular Python. The difference is I don't have to worry if you have Python installed. I don't have to have you run Python first. I can just have you run it as an executable and it works. Now you can do the same thing on Windows and the only difference is instead of when you do Pi Armor, or I'm sorry, when you do the um, Pi Installer, you will just change the what you're actually putting in there instead of the one file, but you have to do that on a Windows machine. Don't do it on a Linux machine because you'll get incompatibility issues and it won't work. So that's it guys. This was a quick 10 minute tutorial. I just want to show you guys how I obfuscate a lot of my Python modules. Um, this would be for, like I said, if I'm obfuscating Python specific, don't try to use Pi Armor or, um, you know, anything for, uh, I don't know, a Windows executable already. That wouldn't make any sense. So make sure you guys check it out, try it out and mess with it, man. Go ahead and here's the way, easiest way to mess with it. I'll tell you right now. Take your file, run it on your machine, make sure it works, take your module, run it on your machine, then blacklist it in your antivirus, right? Say specifically, do not allow this file to run. Now take your file, obfuscate it, change the name, run it again, and see if it runs. Then if it does run, go ahead and take, take that file, create an elf file out of it, and run it as an executable instead of a Python, and see if it runs that way. That's the best way to do it, man. You gotta, you gotta mess around with this stuff. You gotta have fun. Hopefully you guys like this content. Um, some of these videos do well and some of these don't, the 10 minute tutorials, but I wanna keep them going because I think it's a very quick, easy reference guide and it's awesome to see. So hopefully you guys like it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and thanks guys.